In this video, we'll be looking at the Braintree gem and how you can integrate Braintree's payments platform into your Rails app. I want to show you what the final product will look like and then we'll go through the steps that it takes to get to it. So what I made here is a basic Rails app called PokeCommerce and it is an online marketplace for Pokemons. Say in this case you wanted to buy Articuno, which I definitely do because Articuno is my favorite Pokemon. You would go in here and you type in your credit card number, which in this case is 4 followed by 15 ones, and the explanation, expiration date, which is any time in the future. And then click pay $10 and it says yay you did it you can make that page anything you want but I just wanted to say yay so how did we get that and by the way if you go to your Braintree dashboard it's not real time but if I came back in a few minutes and refresh this page it would say that that one head had just come in right now so Braintree is very very easy to set up and allow you to, ex to uh, accept payments on your website and that's kind of what I want to walk you through right now. So the first thing that you have to do is add the Braintree gem into your gem file as well as the .env Rails just for, for configuring your credentials. You might have seen my other video demonstration about the .env Rails gem and how it can be used to set environment variables or you might already know how to do that, but basically you need to set up three in your .env file, which are your merchant ID, public key, and private key. I'll be here when you get back from doing that. Okay, so you're all set up with your configuration. What you want to do next is figure out where it goes in the flow of your website's UX. So in my case, I just have it on the show page for a given Pokemon resource. So in your Pokemon's controller, you want to require gems and brain tree, and then you need these four configurations. And by the way, I'll post links in the description for Braintree's own documentation on this so that you can refer to those as well. And as a further side note, this can be done anywhere, I just have it in the controller because that's the easiest to include. Like I said before, it's going to be on the show page. And on the server side, you basically need to generate a, a token. And we won't get too far into what that is, but it's basically just a securely generated string that of, of letters and numbers and symbols that Braintree will use to authenticate payment requests and we'll store it in this variable at token. Now it's very important because or it's it's important that you that you generate it here in the controller and then you need to interpolate it on the page itself in the JavaScript element that includes Braintree's JavaScript. So right here just is var client token equals the interpolation of at token. And you can see on here if we inspect this element. Where is it? Script, yeah. So it's this whole really long convoluted set of this long string. Um, so besides, so besides setting the the token and getting that generated for the page for the for the view, you need to add this this script and this element, and that will render into this, which is both a form for entering your card number and expiration date, but also it gives you a PayPal button, which will allow you to do what, what would be the result of if somebody clicked pay with PayPal. That's not everything, however, because you also have to set up a route for the slash checkout 
and you can do that in here. So what I said, post, checkout, and then I said that should map to the Pokemon's controller and the checkout action, which I then wrote down here. And this is basically the, the process of taking the params from the previous page, from the show page, and sending it to Braintree. Now, I have $10 hard-coded as the amount of the transaction, but that obviously isn't going to be the case most of the time. And so what you could actually do is have a param price, for example, in the form or elsewhere on the page, and it just gets picked up as a param, params amount, as I had right here. And that's basically the whole, the whole thing. Once you're done with that, the gem will take care of the rest, and you can go back to building the rest of your website. That's all there is to it. Enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next video.